how did you start this journey to creating a merchandise brand? What are some upfront or some uh, precursor steps or precursor thinking that had to go into it? Yeah. Um, so the one, the first thing I'll say, and by all means, you know, as a small business owner, visionary, you can definitely start something that's just like a good idea. You, you could do that. I see people do it all the time. What has helped me is alignment, right? Even though I have things that may seem abstract to the general public, if you really dig into it and connect the dots, everything that I've ever done is in alignment to the mission to helping people of color be the wealth starters in their family, whether abstractly or directly, right? So when I was sitting around thinking about this idea, ironically enough, well, we don't have enough time to go into the details of it, but I had a health journey the same year I got married. Um, I had a spinal surgery and long story short, I was kind of out for the count, sitting down, couldn't do much. And so when I was sitting down and I was thinking, it made me think about selling something that didn't involve my time. You know, I was like, okay, ooh, this is a learning lesson. Now, granted, I practiced what I preached. I had the disability insurance. I had everything I needed to have in place to be okay during that season. But it was a great reminder that it's all you need a, some type of arm or some type of business that it can make money independently of your time, right? Um, and so that's kind of where the original idea came from. And then it was like, okay, well, what is my mission? Right? My mission is to empower people of color to build wealth. How can I align that mission with something that will do that? Um, and then of course, you can do it with courses. You can do it with a lot of things, which I've done. But ultimately, I landed on um, a merchandise brand because I thought it would be a two for one. I was like, okay. Number one is something that I can sell. And then number two, it's going to drive ancillary traffic or awareness to my overall mission, which ultimately I might get a client from it, you know, or something like that. Right. And so that was kind of my thought process, which because it was in alignment for me, it really made sense. So then it was like, okay, the name goes back to the same thing. I'm serving people of color. I'm in the money space. Now, I'll be honest, like I'm decent at marketing. It didn't come this easily. It, it was kind of like, you know, a little bit of back and forth. I won't, I won't, I won't. Lie, you, lie to you there. But like, I'm thinking, okay, I'm in the financial space. I'm trying to help people with money, black, but black money. I, could, I, just, I went back and forth, brainstormed it. And eventually I landed on melanin money, right? And I searched, you know how we all do? We go to GoDaddy, we search. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, God is telling me this is for me because it's available and it's only $11.99. I don't got to try to negotiate with nobody. This is for me. Now, the caveat to that is if the domain that was in your head is not available, please don't let that stop you. Make you think like it's a sign that it's not for you, right? It's just a domain, but it just so happened in my case that the domain that I wanted was available, right? So I knew it, bought it for $11.99, and that was that. Then I started researching uh, how to uh, sell clothes online, right? So then I found out that Shopify was a premier platform. Google is your friend. YouTube is your friend. I found out that Shopify was a great platform. This is end of 2017, I want to say. Um, or yeah, end of 2017. And then I didn't know anything about this stuff. That's what I want to empower you by. I knew zero about this, right? Googled it, found Shopify. I was like, all right, well, they got a free trial. I was like, 14 days. Let's see if I can figure something out in 14 days, right? At this point, I didn't have any designs yet. So if I were you, I would start going down the design process before you do the trial. But that's neither here nor there. So I signed up for the trial. And they have with Shopify, they have pre, they have themes and templates that you can leverage. You don't have to be a website expert. So my first website I made in like on my lunch break, basically, right? I just browse on on and I browsed on Shopify. Looked at one of the themes. I was like, well, this looks decent. I can you know grab some pictures and boom, boom, boom. And I had a decent theme that could go live within an hour, right? Of course, there was some some back end things I had to figure out how to add products and stuff like that. But by and large, I had a, a website in about an hour. Then I was like, okay, well, I've never sold much merchandise. I don't know if anybody's going to like these statements that were in my head. I hope they do, but I have no idea. So how can I do this? What's the lowest buried entry way to getting this out there um, without having to spend an arm and leg on inventory, right? So then what happened is I saw that Shopify, similar to Apple, they had their own app store. And in that app store, you can find different plugins that you can run with your store. One of those plugins being what they call a print on demand service, which basically means you can take your logo, which I'll talk about how you can get that created, take your logo, you can mock it up on a shirt, and then you can still sell that on your Shopify store, but it'll be distributed and fulfilled by a third party. Meaning that you don't have to have any upfront costs really outside of the whatever it costs you to design your logo, right? Because you can have it on your website, so I can go to melanamoney.com, click order, add to cart, buy, I'll get a notification that somebody bought it and I don't have to do anything else, 
right? Now, obviously there's pros and cons to that. The pro is it gives you a great opportunity to test the market, to see if people like your stuff. That's the pro without having to spend a lot of money. The con is that naturally, if someone's handling 100% of the fulfillment and distribution, the profit margins are going to be thinner. But if you're not having to come out of pocket with any money, you're not losing any money, it's not a bad way to start. And that's where I started. So I use that as a testing ground to see what the market wanted, right? Now, to kind of go back to how you even get your logo in the first place, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can find a freelance you know, graphic designer. What I use at the time, and there's probably better services, but I use Fiverr.com, right? And Fiverr.com is a website where you can find just about anything when it comes to freelancers doing graphic design, ebook design, whatever the case may be, right? So once I nailed, narrowed down a few typography designs um, in terms of what I wanted to say, I sent it, I found somebody on Fiverr.com and I want to say this one in particular, which was our first like bestseller was about one, like just about a hundred dollars, right? Maybe give or take a hundred dollars. I can go back and look at my account, but just give or take a hundred bucks, right? So now I got this credit for a hundred dollars. I got a free trial on Shopify. At the time I had the plan that was like $29 a month. So really for like $129, I was able to get started. The only other thing that I did that cost money is I pulled a few of my friends, and this was after the website was already launched. I pulled a few of my friends together who just loved me, and I said, hey, I'm going to get some samples made locally. Um, I went to do a quick photo shoot. It was a really basic photo shoot. Um, but they they held me down, did a photo shoot. And so I spent a little bit of money, I think another hundred bucks or so on just some samples for like the people that did the photo shoot. So that way people could see what it looks like on other people, right? And that was it. That That's how I got started. So it's very low barrier to entry. Now, I don't want to oversimplify it. Of course, there's a lot of things that you have to do to grow the brand, market the brand long-term, but that is, that is how you get started. So um, would you still all these years later, start that way. And, and right now, would you still tell somebody, hey, you know, Shopify is a great way because of all the things that you just um, mentioned that, you know, you can really get started with minimal out-of-pocket cost. Um, but then you did talk about how, because they're doing everything, you know, they also get the majority of the money. So if, if, if we should still start that way, and you say a test the waters, test the, uh, you know, proof of concept, so to speak, how long would you stay in that vein before you try to, um, you know, scale up or figure out how to fatten up profit margins and things of that nature? Yeah, great question. Um, the other great thing about Shopify is it has a lot of great native analytics, right? It'll show you your most viewed products, your most purchased products. Now, granted, especially if you're doing drop shipping, you might not you might not be paying as close attention versus if you were just shipping it out yourself, then you know like every day I'm shipping out this particular item. Um, but it has a lot of great analytics that, and I'm really big on data-driven decisions, right? So, you know, funny story, I think it was about two and a half, three years ago, I had this great idea for design, great idea for a design, right? Um, and I was like, ooh, I was like, melanin money, Barack, uh, at the time, I want to say Barack had just got out of office or something. Um, I was like, I'm going to create like a hundred dollar bill design, but with Barack on it, but I'm going to put the 44. I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me that like this wasn't going to crush it. I was, it was, it was the most intrinsic and detailed design I had ever come up with. I was like with the 44 there, then Obama, and I'm going to change this to like, I was all in. Man, when I say nobody went for that, went for that shirt, my feelings was hurt a little bit. Like, you know, Erica Badu, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I just knew that was going to pop, right? But it didn't. Um, so I, instead of me being ego driven and trying to force it to say, no, y'all just don't understand. And I'm going to keep trying to sell it. You know, so I stopped. And it, I mean, it, I could have left it in the store if I wanted to. It wasn't going to sell anyway. Um, so just paying attention to the data, telling like, like, don't, you know, it, you know, it hurts your first time. You know, your first dud is going to hurt. But like, I really thought that was going to pop. It's going to hurt a little bit. But at the end of the day, you got to just keep going keep trying new designs, you know, for every three B there's four duds, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, it is what it is. Um, and so just knowing that that's par for the course. And when the data tells you, you got something you got, so you'll know because people will vote with their dollars. Right. And so to answer your question, when to scale is I'd say if you get at least a hundred people, right. A hundred people to say, and they're not 
majority of friends and family, if you get a hundred people to say, I want that organically, right? Then I think you got something. And at that point you can feel confident, at least doing small order inventories, you know, selling out small order inventories, selling out. And if you still, if it's still going well, then you can double down and even maybe get into paid advertising, which was a game changer for our brand um, as well. So that, hopefully that answers your question. Yep, that was really good.